In this episode, I will explain the possible meaning of a non-reportable or no results on non-invasive prenatal testing or NIPT testing. I will discuss factors that may have caused this test result and options available to learn more about the health of your pregnancy. As you watch this video, you may be feeling panic, anxiety, or many other different emotions. Know that these are common responses after receiving this type of test result. I promise you are not alone. Thousands of people receive a non-reportable NIPT result every year. Look for a future video that will focus on strategies to manage the feelings that can arise from receiving unexpected news during a pregnancy. For those of you who are new here, my name is Kendra and I am a board certified genetic counselor who specializes in prenatal care. I produce informational videos about prenatal genetic testing and how to navigate unexpected news in pregnancy. If you don't wanna miss a video, press the subscribe button now. So what can cause a no result or non-reportable NIPT result? The first thing that might cause this result is poor quality of the sample. So there may not have been enough blood collected by the laboratory or the sample was not collected properly by the lab. The second cause might be low fetal fraction. A low fetal fraction means that there is not enough of the genetic material from the placenta circulating in a pregnant person's blood. And because of this low amount of DNA from the placenta, the lab is unable to perform the test. You might be wondering, well, what causes a low fetal fraction? There are many factors that can cause low fetal fraction, and they can include early gestational age. So for example, a pregnancy where the sample is drawn before nine or 10 weeks, the fetal fraction might be low. Obesity can also cause a low fetal fraction. As the weight of a pregnant person increases, the fetal fraction decreases. Use of a specific medication by a pregnant person called low molecular weight heparin, or also called Lovenox, which is a blood thinner, can decrease the amount of fetal fraction in a pregnant person's blood. Incorrect sample collection or processing might cause this type of result. A twin pregnancy could cause a low fetal fraction. In vitro fertilization can also cause low fetal fraction. Research shows that the fetal fraction is lower and the NIPT test failure rate is approximately two to three times higher in a pregnancy conceived with IVF versus a pregnancy conceived naturally. The last cause of a low fetal fraction may be that the pregnancy is affected with a chromosome abnormality. So you may wonder what follow-up tests are available if you receive a non-reportable NIPT result. In some cases, the laboratory may accept a second blood sample to repeat the NIPT result. This should be done at least seven days after the first sample was collected. It is important to know that there is a chance to receive a second non-reportable NIPT result. Some people receive a low risk or negative screening result, while others might receive a high risk or positive screening result on the second blood draw. Other people might choose to undergo a diagnostic test, which includes either a CVS or an amniocentesis. Both tests can examine all 23 pairs of a baby's chromosomes. CVS and amniocentesis are performed at different times during pregnancy. CVS is commonly performed between 10 to 13 weeks in pregnancy, and amniocentesis is typically performed after 16 weeks in pregnancy. Both of these tests require a needle to be inserted into the uterus. For CVS, a sample of tissue is taken from the placenta, and for amniocentesis, a sample of the amniotic fluid is collected from around the baby. There is an extremely low chance to receive a non-reportable or no result from either a CVS or an amniocentesis. This is because a direct sample of the placenta or the amniotic fluid is analyzed. It is also important to know that CVS and amniocentesis are associated with some risks to the pregnancy. 
the risk for a pregnancy loss or miscarriage from either a CVS or amniocentesis is estimated to be less than one in 100 chance or less than 1%. These risks should be discussed more with your healthcare provider. There are other people who choose not to have any additional genetic testing. So they do not provide a second blood draw for the NIPT result, and they do not opt to do a CVS or amniocentesis procedure. Some individuals choose to just have their pregnancy followed by ultrasound alone. It is important to remember that ultrasound has limitations and cannot detect all pregnancies that are affected with a genetic or chromosome condition. Speak to your healthcare provider or a genetic counselor about which option may be best for you. You can find a genetic counselor near you in the United States or in Canada on the following website. Please support our community by liking and subscribing to this channel. I would love to hear from each of you. If you'd like, share a comment below about your own experience receiving a non-reportable NIPT result or feel free to comment on a topic you would like me to cover in a future episode. With love and light, see you next time.